If you find yourself frequently missing important notifications because the notification sound isn't loud enough, this app called Awake Now offers a solution. It instantly triggers an alarm whenever it detects a specific keyword within the notifications of your chosen app. For example, for my messaging app, I set Awake Now to alert me whenever it spots the word help. So now, anytime someone texts me the word help, even if it's within a sentence, an alarm will go off. I can also specify a person's name, so if that person ever DMs me, my phone's alarm will also go off. Or if you have smart devices like a Ring doorbell or a Nest camera, Awake Now can sound the alarm whenever the camera sends you a notification that there's someone at the front door. The possibilities are endless. The only drawback is that it does cost 98 cents to install, but considering the peace of mind you'll receive, knowing that you'll never miss an important notification again is a pretty small price to pay. If your battery is draining fast, I recommend you download Comatose because it'll let you put your Android into a deep sleep as soon as you lock the screen. During deep sleep, most background processes and apps are either delayed or stopped altogether, significantly benefiting your battery life. And by default, most phones usually take a few minutes of the screen turning off and the phone remaining still to enter deep sleep. And any movement can disrupt this state. With Comatose though, you have the flexibility to initiate the deep sleep immediately after locking your device. And you can customize its intensity according to your preferences. You can opt for a more moderate setting which provides additional power savings with slightly delayed notifications, or choose a more extreme setting for maximum power conservation even if it means sacrificing background processes. The best part is that Comatose doesn't require root access to work and you simply need to enable it with an ADB command when you first open the app. One important thing though, is if you uninstall Comatose later on, you need to remember to reset your device to its default idle settings. Otherwise, your custom profile will remain even after the app has been removed. Also, if you end up liking the apps that I pick in this video, just drop a thumbs up so that I can know that I'm choosing the apps that you guys like and find useful. If there's enough positive feedback, then I'll be sure to continue sharing similar useful apps just like these. Thanks guys. If you're using a third party charger and want a better way of knowing how fast it actually charges, you can use watts to get a battery power indicator within your status bar. That way you know exactly how fast your phone is getting charged based on the wattage and how fast it drains when it's unplugged. Within the app, you can even change the units to anything else, including apps, volts, etc. And you can also do some workarounds if the power isn't displayed properly. Just keep in mind that it may not be compatible with every phone out there because some manufacturers may not fully support the Android Battery Manager API. Either way, it's free to download off GitHub so it wouldn't hurt to see if it works on your device. Next we have Flut Renamer and this app lets you quickly rename as many files as you like at the tap of a button. I found this to be incredibly handy because on my OnePlus 12, all of the pictures they take are named with a confusing title with many numbers. I mean, I know it's the date, but it's still hard to tell which phone took it. Uh, plus, if I transfer over these files to my computer, in the future, I'd probably forget which phone took the shots and I would need to dig into the exit tags to find out. So to make life easier, I jump into Flut Renamer, tap on Add File, head into the DCIM folder, and then Camera, and then I'll find all of my pictures taken on that phone. From there, I can either select individual files or use the option at the top to select them all. Then I tap on select, and from there I can add several rules on how I'd like to rename all the files. Typically I start by identifying a common element in the file names, such as the initial letter or number. For instance, for the OnePlus 12 photos, they all start with the letter I, so I put that within the replace target text field. Then I enable metadata, tap on the I icon next to it, and then choose photo cam name so that the phone name appears at the front of the file name. I also add a space, a dash, another space, and then the initial character back in for a neat format, which in this case is the letter I. I also put a one within the third text field so that the replacement gets limited to just one letter. Finally, I hit add, and I can see a preview of how the names will look for each file. Once I hit the play icon, all those files will get instantly renamed, and now I no longer need to rename each file one by one, and I'll know exactly which photos were taken by which phone. Very useful. 
This next one is pretty crazy. It's called Cuberite, and it literally lets you run an entire Minecraft server off your phone. Setting it up is also a breeze. You simply grant it storage permission, hit install, and it'll take care of the rest, downloading the server seamlessly. Once you hit start, your server will be up and running. From there, it'll give you an IP address, which you can input this address in the multiplayer tab of your Minecraft game to add the server and join in with your friends. Moreover, the app includes a console tab where you can manage the world using standard Minecraft commands. Plus, once you're done playing, you can kill the server with a tab of a button. It's that easy. Just keep in mind that Cuberite will only work with the Java edition of Minecraft and only works with older Minecraft versions, specifically 1.12.2 or lower. Fortunately, you can easily access these older versions by creating a new installation through the installations tab of the Minecraft launcher. In my last video, I showed off a bunch of free open source apps that are great alternatives to some paid services. And within it, I also showed off how easy it is to block ads on Android. But for the few of you who haven't seen it, you can block all the ads on your phone by just heading into the settings, going into network and internet, selecting private DNS, and within the private DNS provider host name, you can just type in dns.adguard.com. Once you hit save, most of the ads in your browser and applications should now be blocked. If you use a DNS service like NextDNS, you can even customize the ad blocking experience. And the reason I'm bringing this up all over again is because I came across this app called Private DNS Quick Toggle. And this basically adds a tile within your quick settings to let you easily switch between your DNS providers or toggle them on or off. Comes in handy for certain scenarios. Like if you're playing a game and want to watch the ads to unlock an in-game reward, you just go into your quick settings panel, tap on that tile, and all those ads will be returned after you refresh the app or website. Super handy. Video Summarizer lets you use AI to summarize any YouTube video by just pasting its link inside the app. I always use it when I don't feel like watching an extremely long video, like a keynote, tutorial, or even a TED talk. It's not perfect, because sometimes it does miss a few chapters of a video, but in those instances, I can tap on this bubble at the top to conversate with the AI and tell it to expand on a certain topic that it may have missed or ask it questions about the video. Plus, I love how it saves the history of each video I summarized. It's also completely free and has no ads, which is fantastic. Moving on, I have some pretty incredible news from Newegg, the sponsor of this video. Newegg is literally releasing a new egg. Look. It's got the fastest speeds. Oh my god. Why RGB without the RGB part and extremely yummy. Mm. And with that said, April Fools. What Newegg does have in store though is an awesome April Fool's cell. They had this two terabyte and dot two solid state drive getting a 57% discount, knocking the price down to just $99. If you're looking for a great mechanical keyboard, the HyperX Alloy Origin 60 is 56% off. Looking for a powerful gaming monitor? This 27 inch Quad HD display with a 165 Hz refresh rate is 28% off, selling for just $180. And if you need some headphones, the PlayStation Pulse is 14% off, trading at just $175. That's just the tip of the iceberg though. There are so many deals happening on Newegg's website. So head on over through the top link in the description if you've been looking to save some money on some amazing tech. Switching to the games, first up is Macau Bros. And it's a Flappy Bird-like game, but with an adventure style twist. Just like before, you can tap on the screen to make the bird fly. And if it runs into a pipe, it will die. But where things take a turn is that the worlds are more of a platform style game where the bird needs to roam around different rooms and avoid extra things that can hurt it, like spikes, razors, dinosaurs, arrows, and more. Plus, the bird can even walk on the floor now, and when you run into a wall, it will start flying in the other direction. It's a great idea, and I honestly find it really addicting. It's also not an easy game to play, because just like the OG Flappy Bird game, there are no checkpoints. So if you die, you'll need to start from the beginning. And that's pretty annoying because all the levels are pretty lengthy and even require you to obtain an extra key to unlock the final door to move on to the next level. There are also different worlds that you can play through with each having a different theme, so it doesn't feel as repetitive. Plus the graphics, controls, and music are really well done. 
I just couldn't play the music in this video just in case it's copyright, but still, definitely give it a try. Riftbusters is up next, and it's a great looter shooter style game. Inside, you play as a freelance mercenary who needs to travel to different worlds to complete certain missions. And as you visit these worlds, you get to team up with different players to fight against hordes of evil aliens. Most of the time, you're just trying to find and collect certain items on different planets. And as you do that, you'll always find yourself going up against waves of alien attackers. Plus, you get to use different weapons to destroy those aliens, and it gets pretty intense. Eventually, you'll be able to obtain even more powerful weapons to attack a lot faster. But the aliens will also get stronger and arrive in larger groups, so just be warned. I also really like how you can freely roam the different worlds, explore the maps, and take as much time as needed to complete the missions. The only thing I don't like is that you can't lower the graphics, so it can get pretty laggy if you're not using a high-end flagship. I even had trouble playing it on my Pixel 8 Pro. On my Galaxy S24 Ultra though, it ran as smooth as butter. So if you have a higher end flagship, I'm sure you'll enjoy this game. Jump to Roa is a more graphic friendly game that doesn't require the latest chipset to play smoothly. It's also really addicting and easy to get the hang of. It's a fast paced puzzle game with challenging micro levels. The idea is simple. You just need to reach the door to pass on to the next stage. And while trying to reach it, you will need to avoid anything that can hurt you like spikes, monsters, and more. It only has around 90 levels, but each one does get harder and harder to pass, so it won't be that easy to complete the game in one sitting. Plus, since it's got such a minimal design and one-touch swipe controls, you can literally play this game with one hand, making it the perfect game to play while you're on the go and just looking to kill some time. Anyways, tap this video to see the last episode of the best Android apps. I promise those apps are just as good. Also, if you like the apps that I picked in this video, could you please show me by just dropping a quick thumbs up? That way I know that I'm choosing the right kind of apps and I'll continue to share similar useful apps just like these. Either way, thanks for sticking to the end. Make sure to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on so that you don't miss out on these monthly episode videos and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!